Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our morning service. I hope you're well, I hope you're keeping safe, and I hope that things are all right with you. You know, there are signs that we may soon be able to start recording from our churches again, and we're going to have to decide if that's really what we want. But for now, let's begin. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And so we say together, we have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. So now we're going to sing that lovely hymn, Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy, whose trust ever childlike, no cares can destroy. And so now we come to our time of confession. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. And so together we say, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you for our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins, and restore us in his image, to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So now we come to the collect for the fifth Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Now, Joe Dobbs is going to bring our Gospel reading to us. The readings taken from John chapter 14 
verses 1 to 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now Michael Patterson is going to bring God's word to us. Let us pray. Lord, take my mind now and think through me. Take my lips and speak through me your words to teach and touch our hearts that we may glorify you in our lives for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. At this time of COVID-19 and the lockdown, there is a great deal of anxiety and fear and grief. There's also anxiety about the survival of shops and businesses, of industry, of tourism, and the airlines and of course the National Health Service staff are working flat out and for very long hours and some are exhausted and some of them sadly have succumbed to the virus. Jesus disciples were also anxious they had just received some disturbing news. Jesus had warned them that he would be with them very little longer and they would not be able to follow, although later they would be able to follow him. So Jesus' words, do not be troubled, or do not be anxious, do not be fearful, apply as much to us today as to them in those days. Jesus provides two antidotes for troubled minds, trust and hope. Trust in God, he said, trust also in me. Why? Because he is the bridegroom, he is the way to the Father, he is God. So let's take the first one, Jesus is the bridegroom. He said, in my Father's house are many rooms. Now the Greek word for room implies a permanent dwelling, uh, a home, nothing temporary about it. And he went on to say, and I'm going there to prepare a place for you. Note, many rooms, not just 12. Now, Jesus was using the language here of Hebrew marriage. Once they were betrothed, the bridegroom and the, and the bride would not see each other again for quite a while, perhaps up to a year, perhaps over a year. 
the groom would go to prepare a home fit for his bride in his father's house. The bride would be prepared for her wifely duties. Not even the groom knew when finally he would, uh, they would finally come together. Only when his father gave the fi his final approval to his son's work would the groom with his friends and with much celebration and a huge amount of noise go through the village probably probably by a roundabout route to go and fetch his bride collect her and bring her to his father's house for the nuptials now in the old testament god described was described as israel's husband sadly usually as a deserted husband <coughs> In the New Testament, in John chapter 3, we find John the Baptist calling Jesus the bridegroom. And in Matthew chapter 9, Jesus refers to himself as the bridegroom. Paul told the Corinthian church, I betrothed you to Christ. So, no surprise then at Jesus saying, I will come back and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. What we don't know is exactly when Jesus will come back. And Jesus himself said, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only knows. But he will come back for us. That's his promise. What a comfort. And then secondly, Jesus is the way to the Father. Because Jesus followed this up with, you know the way to the place where I'm going. Now, honest disciple Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Wow, isn't that the height of arrogance? How dare Jesus say such a thing? Either he's a madman, or he's a fraud, or it's true. Didn't Jesus wash the, the feet of the disciples at the beginning of this meal? And even now he's on his way to lay down his life for the sheep. Was that arrogance? Was that self-serving? Sadly, I know of a person who, when he conducts a funeral, omits the words, no one comes to the Father but by me. Why? Because it's contentious and he doesn't wish to offend, especially when the people are grieving. But if you remove those words, you remove the uniqueness of our faith. You reduce Christianity to just another path on the mountain, up the mountain, seeking God. When the uniqueness of Christianity is that God has come to us in the person of his only son who died for the sins of the whole world. And he is the way to the Father, the only way, and because he is both fully man and fully God. So we should not fear to grasp firmly those words, no one comes to the Father except through me. But what about the first part of Jesus' response to Thomas? I am the way and the truth and the life. He is the way to the Father, as we've already seen, and he's basically saying, carry on following in my footsteps. I am truth. Not only did Jesus tell the truth, he is the truth, which is possibly the best reason for trusting him. I am the life. He's not simply alive, but he is life itself, the life that never dies, and all because of what happened on Easter Day. And then thirdly, Jesus is God. Jesus' response to Thomas concludes, If you really knew me, you would know my father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. 
but Philip knew his scriptures. And the scriptures record God telling Moses, You cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. So how could Jesus say to the disciples, You have seen the Father? Philip asked him, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. To which Jesus replied, After all this time, Philip, don't you know me? He who has seen me has seen the Father, so how can you say, show us the Father? Jesus continued, Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words I say to you are not my own. My Father who lives in me is doing his work. Jesus, in other words, is the full revelation of God. What is God like? Look at Jesus and you see what God is like. So how does this affect us? Well, Jesus said, anyone who has faith in me will do what I've been doing, and greater things than these will he do. And he went on to say, and I will do whatever you ask in my name. Because I'm in the Father, and the Father is in me. That does not mean that you can simply add, in Jesus' name, at the end of any old prayer. Remember, the name reveals the character. Jesus, Yeshua in Hebrew, means he saves. And that, of course, is exactly right. And the longer we follow Jesus, the more we get to know him, and the more we see the world about us through his eyes, and we see what needs to be done. And then we shall begin to pray in his name to the glory of God. Now, let's bring this all together. This passage should be an encouragement to everyone suffering in any way from COVID-19 COVID virus. No secular or humanist ideology can come anywhere near it. God himself, in the person of his son Jesus Christ, <coughs> came into the world, showing that he is both alive and that he loves us. By dying and rising to new life, Jesus reopened the way to an intimate relationship with God. For anyone who will follow him. How wonderful is that. Hallelujah. Amen. So now we're going to sing that lovely hymn by Stuart Tannen, Love of God Revealed in Wonder. <laughs> Sing together. Love of God revealed in wonder by the words of a maker's hand. Seized that war with thunder splendor, fields that whisper and leaves command. All the joys of love. Thank you.
now together declare our common faith in the words of the Creed. And so we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now Anne Stevenson is going to lead us in our prayers and our intercessions. Let us pray. For morning light and the gift of a new day, we praise you, Heavenly Father. And with thankful hearts, we entrust ourselves and those we love into your hands, praying that you will help us, guide us and keep us in all that lies before us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, who did say to thy servant Thomas, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. Mercifully grant that we, looking to thee by faith, may find in thee the way that leads to the Father, the truth that makes us free, and the life that is life indeed, now and always. Hear our prayers, we beseech thee. Amen. Lord God, thank you for loving us, even when we turn away from you. We are grateful for your constant care and concern. Though we feel unworthy of your great love, we thank you that through our weaknesses you give us strength, and in all our wanderings you show us the way. Receive our gratitude, O Lord, and make us worthy of your goodness. For Jesus' sake, Amen. Father, give to us and all your people, in times of anxiety, serenity, in times of hardship, courage, in times of uncertainty, patience, and at all times, a quiet trust in your wisdom and love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, 
as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Yes, and now our final hymn this morning is that lovely hymn, My Heart is Filled with Thankfulness. your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So now finally the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And so now we come to our final blessing. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Well, that really does bring our service to a close. There will be a service next week. I look forward to seeing you then. Please join us if you possibly can and share the link to our service with others as well. Um, God bless, keep safe, and goodbye.
Good morning everybody, this is just a final notice at the end of our service. It's been suggested that it would be lovely if we could incorporate a few more familiar faces into our service, just so that we can say hello because we're missing one another due to the lockdown. So it'd be really good if we could do that and Ray and I have come up with an idea. We'd like to invite you please either to, re to record the We Are Gathered Together prayer or the words of the grace, leaving a slight pause at the end of every sentence or phrase so that we will be able to splice them together and come up with a complete prayer which we'll be able to show on our service. If you don't feel able to do that, please take a photograph of yourself holding a placard perhaps with a line of prayer on it and we will include those in some way when it comes to our praying. So please do that, please smile, It'd be lovely to see you and let me know when you've got those recordings done. Thank you. God bless and thank you. Well, that really does bring our service to a close. There will be a service next week. I look forward to seeing you then. Please join us if you possibly can and share the link to our service with others as well. Um, God bless, keep safe and goodbye.